even 13 years after the event, the 1994 genocide in Rwanda remains a major factor in the country's public life. About 200 delegates from parliaments in Africa, the Caribbean, the Pacific and the European Union have been invited to this Kachacha trial near Kigali Airport. Kachacha is a community justice system. Rwanda set it up to deal with those who engaged in the killings. It's a remarkable system, especially given that it does not involve lawyers. The system instead involves the entire village, and everybody is given a chance to speak. Kachacha justice is one example of how Rwanda, with its limited resources, is coping with the aftermath of the genocide. Irish MEP Gay Mitchell is impressed. Well, it's quite extraordinary to stand here and to imagine the sort of violence that took place here such a short time ago when about a million people were killed in a population of less than nine million people. That sort of violence has, is hard to contemplate and yet we have a people that are trying to reconcile themselves with that fact and they are aiming to mediate that difficulty. Rwanda this year is guest host of the 14th Parliamentary Assembly of the ACP EU countries. This assembly includes 78 official representatives of the ACP countries and 78 from the European Union. It also includes 29 MEPs of the European People's Party, European Democrats Group. 36 years ago, a partnership was built by the countries that were part of the uh, ex-colonies of the European Union countries to bring them together to create a partnership, a genuine partnership, uh, where development issues and co-development could take place. As the EU grew, the hope was that the former colonies would grow with them and they become become prosperous. That hasn't happened. We have uh, problems together. We have a relationship, and with the new joint EU Africa strategy, we like to uh, outline a strategy to cooperate together. And that's for the first time in history we have a joint strategy to combat poverty in Africa and to develop African countries. Solving these problems means that it's necessary to reach new agreements on issues like trade and healthcare. British MEP John Bowers is rapporteur on an ACP EU report about neglected diseases. Most people are aware of the need to handle HIV AIDS and malaria, but it is difficult for developing nations to properly address diseases that are not widespread, like diabetes or epilepsy. Bowers proposes to make more funds available to treat these diseases and to make it easier for poor people to buy these drugs. The Bowers report was adopted with strong support from the ACP countries. The ACP countries were, um, were positive, they, they understand, they, they live with these diseases. Uh, the European countries were positive, uh, in some cases they admit they're learning about these diseases, they can see how they can make a difference. But if you're not living on the ground, you know exactly what it means to, to live with, uh, with uh, epilepsy or to, uh, to live with uh, schistosomiasis. Uh, and uh, you know you need uh, help and you know at the moment nobody's helping you. While it was easy to get support for the healthcare report, it was a challenge to get the ACP to throw their weight behind the statement on China's role in foreign direct investment. China has become a major buyer of natural resources in Africa. Luxembourg MEP Astrid Luning regrets that the ACP countries did not acknowledge China's increasing significance. In Africa we have a saying that goes when two elephants fight, the grass suffers. If the EU has issues to pick up with China, it is our view that the ACP EU forum is not the right place to do it. Il y a euh, euh, beaucoup de spécialistes euh, qui rendent attentifs à ce danger, qui même qualifient la politique de la Chine en Afrique de néocolonialisme. Moi, je n'ai pas dit ça, euh, mais au fait, euh, les experts euh, dans ce domaine le disent et euh, la Commission européenne a fait une étude et elle dit clairement que ce que fait la Chine en Afrique maintenant euh, euh, fait plus de dommages que de biens et ne réduit pas la pauvreté des gens. The Kigali meeting also was again an opportunity to meet members of political groups in Africa that share the same value as the EPPED group. This is known as the Windhoek Dialogue, an initiative taken in 1996. 
The idea behind this Windhoek dialogue is to develop a network for cooperation, not just between the EPPED group and its African partners, but also among the African parties themselves. It is of course in Africa it's a bit different than in Europe. Uh, the structures of parties are not comparable. Uh, many are still ethnic oriented, uh, others are not, uh, but we would like to promote the principles that we share uh, in Europe, also for Africa, because I think we are, they are global principles. Development can only take place in a framework of good governance, of democracy, of peace. I see it as a very important uh, dialogue, which uh, brings together uh, many African, uh, especially the African political parties in different countries. For us, it was really an occasion to have a cadre of exchange with the group of Democrats Chrétiens and also to establish a partnership in the cadre of the well-being of our countries and particularly the reinforcement of the capacity de nos membres au sein de nos partis politiques. My expectations are that it should be it should be developed uh, further. Uh, it, it should take us, I think, to set to certain levels where um, where you know the, the the communication and the and the ability for particularly for the developing countries to develop uh, according to a pace that is compatible to to themselves and uh, I suppose to the to the projects that are being promoted. The headlines at the ACP EU meeting in Kigali are made in the talks on preferential treatment of the former colonies of the EU member states. That treatment is not compatible with the rules under the World Trade Organization. For the last seven years, ACP countries enjoyed a special status. That situation ends in 2008. The EPPED has argued in favor of a new system that includes economic partnership agreements. These are open to all developing countries, not just the ACP states. We try to promote the understanding amongst our African and Caribbean and Pacific partners that we have to find a WTO compatible new framework because there are other developing countries. What shall I tell Bangladesh? That they don't have preferential access to our markets and they still, of course, they desperately need it also. So the issue of equal treatment of developing countries with us, that is an issue. The declaration agreed in Kigali opens the door for EPAs, but not immediately. The European Commission, just as the EPPED group, notes that the ACP countries remain reluctant to give up their special status. I can't agree with everything what is in the declaration. Uh, for instance, the very re reluctant attitude towards the HIPAS, uh, I cannot share that because I think the HIPAS is really a very important tool to develop Africa, to develop the ACP countries. Economic partnership agreements will remain a prominent feature of international trade talks in the coming months. But with the Kigali Declaration on the table, the creation of a level playing field among developing nations in world trade has come a small step closer.